Do you ever wonder just how much charcoal to use when cooking with your Dutch oven? It's actually super easy to figure out, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Holly with Let's Go Now Adventures, and our YouTube channel is about all things camping. Whether you tent camp or RV camp, our goal is to just help you have a great camping experience. So today we are talking about how the heck do you know just how much charcoal to use when cooking with your Dutch oven? Well, the formula that we are going to share with you is super simple, but it's just a guide. You know, there are so many different factors that come into play that can affect your Dutch oven cooking. Humidity, altitude, air and ground temperature, and even the method of cooking. And so just kind of keep that in mind as we go through this video. Now Lodge, a leader in cast iron cookware, does put out a baking temperature guide chart for Dutch oven cooking, and I'll leave the link below. This guide breaks it down to actual oven temperatures and how many coals you'll need, and you may find that helpful if you're looking for more of a precise way to cook with your Dutch oven. But hey, in all honesty, we just bake everything at 350 degrees and then kind of watch for indications that it's done or it needs more time. It's so easy to make small adjustments. You know, if you can't smell anything, it probably needs more time. If you smell something burning, get your food off the coals. And if your food starts to smell amazing, then you know you're doing good. You know, so see, it's super simple. John and I camp almost every single weekend of the summer and probably at least one of our meals on each trip is made in our Dutch oven. So yes, we do a lot of Dutch oven cooking and I do have to say that it's one of my very most favorite ways to camp cook. So my hope today is that I can kind of take away some of the mystery out of how to cook with your Dutch oven so that you guys can enjoy it as much as we do. Now, the trick is to not overcomplicate things. We use a simple two to one ratio for almost everything and we have a lot of success. You know, there's so many different charcoal guides out there and it can get confusing. It may even deter you from using your Dutch oven. But we have found that just by keeping it simple, having fun and adjusting as you go works for us. You know, with Dutch oven cooking, there's kind of an art that comes into play. You know, it's not an exact science, there's not an exact number of coals because of all the different factors that can affect your cooking times. So it's more about having a basic formula and then adjusting it to your particular situation. So if you're just getting started or you haven't had a lot of success with your Dutch oven, give our two to one ratio method a try. So, you ask, what is our two to one method? Well, let's start out by saying that we are using a 12 inch cast iron Dutch oven. And let's first talk about baking. You know, if you're going to be baking something like breads, cobblers, casseroles, or meats, like I said, it's a two to one ratio. You start out with the diameter of your Dutch oven, which ours is 12 inches. You double that, which is 24, then you figure you're going to use a third of the coals on the bottom and two thirds on the top. So a third would be eight coals on the bottom and then 16 coals would go on top, which equals 24. You want it to be 350. So I have eight coals underneath and I'll have 16 coals on top. Simple, right? So let's try it again. If you have a 14 inch Dutch oven, take 14 times it by two which is 28, and then divide it by three. So that makes approximately nine. So you'd put nine coals on the bottom, which is a third, and then 18 to 19 coals on top, which is two thirds. Does that make sense? So now let's talk about simmering. Let's say you want to make a hearty stew or a yummy chili. Well, we still use that two to one ratio, but with most of the coals being on the bottom this time two thirds on the bottom and then a third on the top. Now if you're roasting something, you can use a one to one ratio, you know, with even coals on the top and bottom. But we would only use that if our meat was sitting up off the bottom of the Dutch oven. Otherwise, we would just default back to our two to one ratio with two thirds being on the top 
and a third bean on the bottom. And then last, if you're trying to fry something or boil something, there is no ratio. All the coals go on the bottom. So when cooking in your Dutch oven, you'll want to check your food periodically for doneness. You know, if you're cooking meat, an instant read thermometer is essential to make sure your food is cooked and up to temperature. Now what we use is a remote meat thermometer. In fact, I'll leave the link below. This thermometer is so great because you can monitor the temperature of your food without opening the lid. Because just keep in mind, each time you lift that lid to check your food, the heat is escaping and you'll need to add additional time to your overall cooking. Now, let's talk about some of the factors that can affect your cooking time. Well, first off is wind. You know, because wind adds oxygen to the cooking environment, it will cause your coals to burn hotter and much faster. It also, however, will blow away the heat. So in this case, a wind barrier is a great idea. Now we used a galvanized metal tub. The sides on the tub help to guard the wind and bonus, when we're boondocking and there is no fire pit, this makes it so that it leaves no burn scar. We're gonna actually be doing our Dutch oven baking in this galvanized steel bucket. I picked this up at Home Depot. It's just a galvanized steel bucket because a lot of times you can't have an open fire. There won't be a fire pit where you're camping and we don't want to leave a burn scar on the ground, especially when we're boondocking. Now we're going to let the coals go until they're hot. When The way you know that they're hot is they're going to be mostly white. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll transfer the, the hot coals into the bottom of this galvanized steel pan. So we'll put the eight down there, and then we'll put the Dutch oven in. We'll put the other 16 on top, and then we'll just let the Dutch oven heat for about 10 minutes. Now they do make camp stove windscreens that would also work for you in this situation. Number two, if the ground is wet or cold, it will steal your heat away. And this is another great reason we like to use our metal container. You know, it's kind of an insulation from the ground. And then third is if you're in a high elevation or high humidity. Now we live here in Utah and most of the summer we camp at eight to 9,000 feet and so we usually have to add more time to our recipes. And then if you're in a high humidity situation, your charcoal could be very difficult to light. <laughs> now when you're ready to start making your meals, you'll want to get your coals ready. And a lot of the times we use a chimney. It's just a more efficient way to get your coals going and it's also much faster. You know, using a chimney eliminates the need for lighter fluid. In fact, all we use is a lit paper towel to get our charcoal going. It usually takes the charcoal about 15 minutes to heat up, turn gray, and be ready to use. So a couple things that will help when cooking with your Dutch oven is to preheat your oven. Now, we don't always do this, and no, it's not necessary, but it does help with overall cooking times. You know, just put the hot and ready coals on your Dutch oven for about 15 minutes and voila, it's preheated. You know, we found that by doing this, cooking times are more exact. You know, it's just like when you preheat your oven at home. Now note, if using your coals to preheat your Dutch oven, this is going to take away from the total cooking time of the charcoal. So you'll want to have another set of charcoal ready and going if your recipe calls for more time than your charcoal is going to last. Another way to preheat your oven is to just set it out in the sun and it will heat up nicely because it's black. Now a batch of coals will generally last uh, about 35 to 40 minutes, give or take. One thing is placement of your coals is also very important. You'll want to put them in either a circular or checkerboard pattern. Just never dump them in the center of the oven, which is actually a very common mistake when people use their Dutch ovens. By placing the coals in a more circular pattern, it will help to distribute the heat more evenly and your food will cook more efficiently. Now, as careful as you are by evenly distributing your coals, you can still get hot spots. And so by rotating your Dutch oven like every 15 minutes is a good idea. It just makes for more even cooking. So you would rotate the lid and the bottom 90 degrees in opposite directions. So I hope this information was helpful. 
If so, give us a big thumbs up. You know, we enjoy Dutch oven cooking so much. And once you realize just how easy it is, I think you'll love it too. Just know, if you can make it in your oven at home, you can make it in your Dutch oven. I've got some wonderful Dutch oven recipes if you're looking for a good place to start, and I'll leave a link to those below. Also, if you'd like to see more camping related videos, consider subscribing to our channel where we put out all kinds of great tips to help make your camping experience a little bit easier and more enjoyable. Well, thank you so much for watching. It was great to have you here, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye-bye.